Love to have him on. Brought to the you by the folks at Renthal, Renthal.com. Adam Cincerillo, what's up, buddy? How are you? I'm retired. I'm retired. <laughs> not officially, not yet. Enough, enough I mean, we, said. we got a few more races to go before yeah. you're actually retired. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's weird, but no, good times. Good times. It, this was. Uh, am I right though, Adam? Like, no, nobody really talks shit on social media about this. I feel. What are you going to say bad about Adam? I, I don't know. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, it has been really. I was not expecting. I definitely was not expecting like the amount of feedback that that I got like uh, across Twitter. I don't know if we're calling it X or Twitter or what, but mm-hmm. on there and, and Instagram and everywhere, man, it's, it's kind of, kind of overwhelming. I had so many texts, man. I had people I hadn't heard from since I won a race last, you know, they, they, they <laughs> found my number again and <laughs> reached out, but no, it's, uh, it's been, it's been amazing, man. It's been, uh, more than I feel I deserve for sure. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really, really cool to, uh, to have you go out like this. If you're going to go out, like, Go out with everybody, sort of like the peers and the fans, you know. It's like they say, uh, uh, um, what do they say about your own funeral? If you could go to your own funeral or something. Not that this is as dramatic as that, but in a way, Adam, it's it's nice to see what people thought of you and how you interact with people, fans and, and media and other racers, you know. It's kind of, it's a little humbling, I'm sure. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, it is. And just to have, you know, it's been a long time, uh, you know, I've been, kind of i caught the social media thing at the perfect time kind of coming up and youtube and all this so a lot of the people uh, a lot of the fans have have watched me for a really long time now and i think mm-hmm. you know a lot of people got to know me kind of as that that goofy little kid on on youtube saying stupid stuff and um <laughs> i think a lot of people still kind of identify as me being a kid you know it makes people i see a lot of comments it makes people feel old that you know that i'm that i'm calling it quits retiring but we did mention um, that it, earlier. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 It is. It's strange because, man, I remember calling into calling into your show when I was like fourteen, fifteen years old. You know, time yeah. time flies. Yeah. But no, it's been it's been really cool. And um, yeah, just to have a small moment like this. You know, I talked about it a little bit in my my little farewell video. But you know, growing up, of course, you know, I had a lot of expectations. I did well young, but really really in my head all i wanted to do was like you you guys know i'm a, i'm just i'm a fan really at heart and all i wanted to do is just you know be a part of it and i think it's cool that that people are you know noticing the fact that mm-hmm. i'm not going to be out there next year i think it's um yeah super humbling really cool super grateful absolutely doug did you know i mean you never really retired like you just kept racing but yeah, your supercross motocross career did you know by ahead of time or were you like you didn't know. You didn't have a chance, like Adam, to, to think about the last. Well, you few know, races. it's funny because Davey did a story on me, like, "Oh, he's retiring," you know, air quotes. But I said, "Oh, Davey," you know, kind of at the end of the story, I said, "No, no, no, I'm not retiring. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just don't have the support anymore." But yeah, I, and it was just coincidental with a lot of the testing ramped up and yeah. YZ400 coming down the road. You know, so my my life changed. But uh, you know, I'd still pop in here or there. But yeah, I never really had you never that had a big moment announcement. Where you're like, this is, you were like, "This is my last Supercross," or "This is my last." <laughs> no, moment. no, never yeah. really had that announcement. So right, right. Which I mean, in our sport, that's how it happens, right? That's how it happens. Is you don't get a ride, or you get you don't have your support. When you can go out like Adam, yeah, that's rare, and it's it's good. Uh, Adam, how is the ankle, by the way? How are we feeling? We're we're good, or? Oh man, this thing's been really bothering me. <laughs> I, man, I was looking forward to I was really looking forward to playing some golf on the off week, and I haven't played since Christmas. And and yeah, I, I knew I knew when I hit the ground. And I'm not even sure. I think Justin Hill. I think he ended up running over my foot, and I think that's maybe what what did the worst mm-hmm. of it. But um, it is getting better. Like I'm walking, I'm walking fine, but I haven't ridden. I haven't really been able to do much of anything. So it's, it's been a bit of a boring, bit of a boring week, but, um, we'll, we'll be out there. We might have, we might have 40 cc's of lidocaine in the ankle. <laughs> a couple uh, rolls of tape. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a shack shoe, long story, but I have a shack shoe signed by shack from the, like the 94 Orlando magic uh, squad. And I might size twenty three. I might have to wear that uh, for for the race. But yeah. um, when did you like? Uh, you know, you and I had talked a while ago. I kind of you know figured it was it. And 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 when did you start being like, if this doesn't get better, you know, my contract's up. Uh, I might just this might be it. Like, when did that first creep into your mind? Um. Well, 
Yeah, so this is, you you know, this is a long, Mm -hmm. this injury, this nerve thing has been going on for a really long time. I mean, since before Monster Cup, like as soon as I got on the 450, basically. And it's, it's, despite every surgery and everything, it's got, it's continued to to get worse. It's had good days here and there and like good moments, but um, it's continued to get worse. And I think the first time I was like, what am I doing is, 2021 off season, um, I 2021 like halfway through outdoors, I um, I stopped racing, got a surgery to to move my ulnar nerve, and was coming back for 2022 Supercross, and I was I was ripping like the the hand was still the hand, but I was like I was really fast, like I was my rookie year, and. Two weeks before Anaheim one, I was going through the whoops and uh, I was kind of near the end of a twenty, and my hand just slid off the handlebar and going about fourth gear, you know, yeah. thirty miles an hour through a fast set of whoops, and that's when I did my AC separation mm-hmm. um, on my shoulder there, and then that the AC separation, uh, you know, with didn't have much strength there, and that kind of led to me crashing at not really even crashing but tearing my acl in practice at san diego Mm -hmm. and yeah i I think right then and there i was kind of like ah man this is not you know it's it's starting to get unsafe like it's not i don't think i ever really went that fast again um i don't think i ever went that fast again like i I probably peaked in december 21 and then I was like, man, I gotta, I kind of gotta figure out how to back it down and and try to see what I can get out of it. But I think the thoughts started to creep in in, in 2022 of like, man, mm-hmm. you know. I, and to be honest, I I'm not sure I expected. Like, I didn't know if I was going to get a ride. I wasn't I wasn't signed. Um, I was signed with Cowie through the end of 22, and um, of course, I mean that's a whole nother. We could sit here for an hour and talk about that, but they've been great loyal to me and they gave me another opportunity and um but yeah i would say yeah december 2021 that one was that one was tough on me uh ac you mentioned a little while ago uh the fact that you were the you called in to pulpa when you're like 14 i just yeah, want to put like yeah. i want to put these pieces together okay. and see if you guys both remember i was down at waldo with um with AC doing, I think a unit photo shoot. Okay. And, uh, you called me and somehow you're like, Hey, AC, I want AC to be my amateur guy. Yeah. And, uh, to this day, I'm pretty sure AC through me. Okay. Uh, is your first and only amateur guy that you've had on the show. Yeah. It might be, it might be hey, <laughs> pretty sure it is. So how about this? <laughs> I, I, I remember this story and the first memory I have of Steve is, I don't know what you wrote. Like you hadn't, we hadn't, uh, I hadn't talked to you. Like mm. I didn't really know who you were at the time, but you wrote some article and you could probably tell the story better than I can. Cause I was so young. I had to be 12 or 13. I think this is, and I think we're talking about the same thing. Cause you needed photos for this. And I was with him. I, and I, well, okay. it was negative. Like something you said, you something you were joking, but something you said rubbed my dad, Alan, the wrong way. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't <don't> say <laughs> And I remember, Shocker. I remember sitting out back in my house, and I remember my dad being on the phone with you. And it was, I mean, it wasn't like we weren't throwing around f bombs and stuff, but it was pretty heated. Yeah, like, I remember that. <laughs> I do. Alan's, Alan's passionate, you know, it's protective. So, and I remember that was kind of my introduction to you. Yeah, what I what I wrote was at the time, Davey was talking about moving the uh, the age to race a national mm. from sixteen to eighteen. And Alan had done an interview. Adam's dad did an interview and said, well, we'll just go to MX2 because it was 15, I think, at that point like to race in Europe. It was 15, and I wrote, like, yeah, good, see ya, or whatever. Like, Because yeah. I was like I, – I felt like it was a, 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 an amateur dad, you know, taking his ball and going home because the rules changed, right? And, yeah, yeah. And I was, so I felt like, okay, well, beat it. Uh, cause I think the age should be 18. I like that. I think that's a, not a yeah. bad rule. Right. Um, it never yeah, ended up happening no. because what happened was the powers that be in American motocross were thinking that they would lose kids to Europe. So mm. they didn't want that in the whole battle of like whose dick is bigger series. Right. But, <laughs> but, but, so they never did that rule, but it was close. And you know, Davey's point is like, you can't even rent a car at 16. Why, why should you race pro anyways? 
Yeah, I was like, I was like, basically like telling Alan C. and Cirillo, like, yeah, beat it. See you later. <laughs> so then my phone rings and it's Alan C. and Cirillo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's talk about it. Oops. But but no no, he was. We had a great discussion. It was not even heated at all. But you know, we just said, you know, Alan was like, look, Adam, my son is he's getting to the point where there's no competition and he's maxing out, and yeah. I got to push him. I I, I, I am gotta, curious you know, though, Adam, from yeah. your perspective now, just talking about this, do you wish? You had have waited a little bit longer because I, I always question if, if kids move up too early, and especially you went from basically super mini to freaking pro. And despite, like, you know, your, your rookie supercross season absolutely hauling ass, winning races, but obviously you're ready for it. But do you look back now and wish maybe you had have gone through your growth spurt uh, or waited to go through your growth spurt a little bit and, and, and waited another year? I, yeah, I mean, I think the, the politically correct answer here is to tell everybody that, you know, I, I don't look back at all. I don't ever look back at the past, but like genuinely, that's just not how, it's just not how I think. Like maybe at one point I did, but I, I don't, I just haven't sat around and, and really thought about that. I think if I, you know, if I take a look back at it now and, um, everything's 2020. It's hard because the, the rookie year is super cross. Had yep. I not, you know, had I not, uh, tore my shoulder up there, it would have been amazing. Like I won my first super cross race. Yep. Like, those are great memories. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, you know, I don't think I was ready 2013 outdoors. Even after I got sick, I came back too fast. Like Bud's Creek, I wasn't fit. And I, I actually had like zero, I found out later in that year, I had like zero iron in my system. Like I was fully anemic. Um, (laughs) It was wild. Yeah, it was wild. But if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't have won Supercross. So it's hard to really take that out of play. Um, Yeah, I I don't don't really know. I mean, at this point in my life, like genuinely, and it's not just like a find the silver lining thing, I, I really wouldn't change it. Like it was, Yeah. you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was my experience and, and yeah, I'm grateful the, for it. The story well said. The story I got from Davey, which I think, you know, Davey was saying on our conference call, we we're talking about Adam and, and doing stories on him. And I guess Davey heard this from Mitch or from maybe from Sternstrom or somebody that your dad was lobbying for you to start racing nationals at that time. Like, super, was it Super Mini? Like, I don't even know. But, and, yeah. And Kawasaki was fighting it a little bit. And your dad said, if you let him race nationals, this is what Davey said. If you let him race nationals, he will win Supercross next year. Like, he needs a uh, – uh, he doesn't want to just jump yeah. into Supercross. Yeah. And Kawasaki, Bruce, or someone was like, well, if we ra- let him race, we expect him to win Supercrosses. And yeah. it was like – everyone was like, okay, then we're going to let him race yeah. because we all think yeah. he can win. Yeah. And you did. I was, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I did. But I – like – it's hard. I mean, it's it's foggy. Obviously, it's a long time ago, but I I know that I was pushing to go pro. I yeah. mean, for for whatever you know, at 16 years old, yeah, I was pushing to go pro. And one of the main reasons behind that is, for right or wrong, I was so over going to amateur races. Yeah, no practice with the pressure with the pressure of having to win by like a minute <laughs> yeah, every yeah. time. Like yeah. I it wasn't just that I had to win. Like yeah. winning was never enough. Like if somebody was within eight seconds of me. It was like the sky was falling every time. <laughs> and so I was just over it. Like I, I wanted a I wanted a different like I wanted a different challenge. I wanted some leeway to go out there and kinda battle and learn and you know, I hadn't really it took me even a long time, but I hadn't really battled with anybody. Like my race craft was was not that great because I was just whole shotting everything and, and winning everything by 30 seconds. Of course, there would be times where I would battle with some dude, not saying it was just a, yeah. you know, every single time, but for the most part, like I had a lot to learn and for what it, you know, for what it was worth, I did, I did learn a lot that summer for sure. Uh, Wes, do you have a, a favorite Adam video you did or anything? Like do you have one? That- I actually, that, this was in the back of my head as a question. I want to see what Adam says first. Like okay. we did a lot of shoots together, but yeah, I definitely have one in the back of my mind. I just want to, I want to, I want Adam to, to say first and then I'll see if, uh, if it, if it's the same. Oh man. Cause it's crazy I, for me. I, I just pulled a ton of footage of, uh, for, for Adam's, uh, I don't know, even know that I can talk about it. There's a video that's getting worked on that I pulled yeah. a lot of footage for, so I got to see a, a lot of memories uh, right. p- pop up on my computer this past few weeks. So, 
The the helicopter shoot at Underground was pretty. Sick That's the same one. Oh, okay, yeah, That's the one you that, thought yeah, it was. Yeah. I was, I was it, it, dude, it's crazy. My my buddy Chris was flying ten feet off the ground right behind Adam, and honestly, I look back at the video now, and I'm like, that was so fucking dangerous. <laughs> yeah, like oh, dude, we could have killed I Adam think. myself. Everybody else there, Jeremy Martin was there, Kyle Regal, freaking crazy. But yeah. it is such badass shots, and uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Side note, side note, it was crazy. When I, I remember I stayed at Underground for like a month one time. Uh, Underground is a track in Texas for those not in the know. But uh, I remember Kyle Regal, man, he's the only guy I've ever been around that ride, that rode seven days a week. He rode every <laughs> single day. Every single day I was at Underground, he rode. I just wanted to give him an honorary there you go. little <laughs> shout out there. Um, Renthal.com bringing you Adam Cincerillo here on the show. Please check out Renthal. Of course, Monster Energy Kawasaki. Adam used Renthal as a pro circuit at uh, Kawasaki as an amateur. All of it. Renthal.com. Please check it out. We do, we do have some phone calls for you, AC. Uh, let's go to Wait. Tyler. He's on two. Tyler, man, what's, uh, what's your question for Adam Cincerillo? Hey, first off, I just want to say congrats on retirement. Great career. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And then um, I was watching that maybe a vlog or on, on Paul, maybe – Five years ago, you, your mindset was, I gave it a hundred percent, and that's all it was. Whether it's a third place, eighth place, or you won, um, that, that stuck with you know, that stuck with me a bit. And when I would go to the local races, I would think that, and like you know, it's racing. You know, some people need to win, but if that's all you got, it's all you got. Mm, nice. Did you always have that mindset, or was that like when you started getting these nerve issues? When you know, when did that mindset kind of come in? When did that mindset come in? I, gosh, I don't know, man. There's been so much. I feel like I've had to, to rebuild myself so many times in this dang sport. It's hard to, it's hard to keep track. But I, I, know, I know part of that mindset comes from being injured and then having to come back and kind of rebuild yourself on, you know, on the bike. You know, like I remember um, – Gosh, it must have been after 2014 Supercross. I I got hurt a bunch, and I didn't even race. I didn't even race again until like 2016 outdoors, I think. And I remember I was like a, I don't know, like a five to ten guy, right? And you know, from somebody that's just used to to winning all the time, it's it can be it can play tricks on your mind a little bit. Like you can be out there and you can be super discouraged, and then you end up being so frustrated that you're you're not able to give your best. You know, I'm getting 10th instead of getting 8th because I'm out there so frustrated with myself, you know. So I think that's kind of where I started learning to to go out there and, and to focus on myself and, and not be so worried about the end result. Um, and a lot of that from amateurs, man, is like I think when I won so much, I was, you know, when I when I wasn't winning, it was such a big deal when I lost that I was like almost worrying about it when I was out there. You know, I was worried about the fallout from, from this kid beating me or uh, stuff like that, like stuff that just kind of happened throughout my amateur career that kind of led me to that point. And then, yeah, I think, mm -hmm. you know, once I started getting hurt in the pros and had to come back, that's, uh, that's kind of when I changed it. Cool. Yeah, man. That's a, I like the, the aspect of just 100%, whatever that is. You know, if you win every race at that, it's great. If not, you know, that's all you, you had that night. So Absolutely, man. Thank thanks, you. I appreciate thanks it. For all the, uh, thanks for all the memories. It's, it's been a great career. So Thank congrats. you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tyler. Appreciate it. Next up is Morgan. Morgan, what's uh, what's on your mind for Adam Cincerillo tonight? Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, before I get to Adam, has anybody checked on Betts? I mean, is he okay? Is he, oh, is yeah. He... How's, how's Betts handling this? AC. Dude, Betts is, I don't know. I, don't, I can't even keep track of where that guy's at. He's a big-time agent guy. We got our first major leaguer. Oh, we did? I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I, gosh, I don't know if I can say that or not. Hopefully it's okay. Let's just move on. Oh, I think, I, <laughs> fuck my ass. The big deal, the big thing that he was talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He's oh. doing great, though. Okay. Um, Morgan, right. what else? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks to Talon and, and Marks, man. You know, you can't. Uh, you need an army, and these guys are behind. Good you, job, boys. So good, good guys. Yeah, they, um, especially on your day off. Yeah, thank but. you for noticing. <laughs> yes, well, Adam you. retired, so we had to have a show. Mm -hmm. So it's Adam's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, no, I, I followed uh, Adam's career basically since I saw him, uh, you interviewing him, Steve, back at Alden's place. He was just a kid. And, uh, you know, I, I've been really impressed with him throughout the years, and I just uh, really wanted to say thank you, AC, for, for everything that you've done. And um, I really hope that we haven't seen the last year. I mean, I, I really hope you're going to continue being around the sport, and I hope uh, you've been a role model to a lot of other racers. And uh, I can't wait to see what you have to, uh, to offer, young man, because uh, I've, I've uh, been really enjoying watching your career. So thank you. Well, genuinely, thank you, thank you for... Thank you for the kind words, and I definitely will not be going, not be going too far. I'll be around for as long as you guys will have me. So, thank you. Thanks, Morgan. And yeah, I'd like to announce Adam's going to be official co-host every week now. He's moving to Vegas. <laughs> yep. So I yep. thought yep. it was every free other deal. week. Yeah. yeah. You, you inked for him free. for every week. Now? Every week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna. We're gonna. Good job, Steve. We matched his factory Cowie salary, <laughs> and uh, he's going to do that for I'm us. I'm sure so. he'd like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Man. Uh, hey, Adam. Here's uh, here's Tim. You put him into retirement. Uh, apparently, Tim, go ahead. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah, funny little story. I was like a local B-class racer in Cali and uh, was gearing up to try my hand at the Spring Nationals. And uh, we were at Glen Helen on like a Thursday, and Adam flew by me on his 85 Super Mini. I was on a 250F. And that day, me and my dad looked at each other. It's like, yeah, you should probably go to college. So, <laughs> then I ended up no going to college, way. and uh, I'm a physician now. But Oh, uh, he's a doctor. Kind of oh, yeah. Good oh, job, Adam. God. You're welcome. Exactly. Yeah, you are welcome. <laughs> we got a doctor in the studio, too. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, yeah, but thanks. I just wanted to tell that story. Yeah. Uh, always had mad respect and would see Adam and Callie a lot. And uh, just a funny little story. So, thanks, Tim. Thanks yeah, that's great. Guys. No, that's awesome, man. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> He's a doctor now, Adam. Look what you did. <laughs> Adam, I'm curious if uh, a little bit of time off, uh, is your nerve so something that's going to like fix itself eventually and get you back on a bike, or is it something that you're going to have to deal with forever? They don't really know. I mean, nerves are nerves are kind of weird. So it's right. like the brachial plexus, which is a, on the top of the shoulder. Um, it, basically, the nerves are just kind of shot. Like, they're just stretched out and... Um, of course, rest helps, but they're not sure if it'll ever be a hundred percent. And and honestly, it's fine. Like I could ride, I can ride for fun if I'm not worried about you know going around the track super fast and um, you know hitting big whoops and stuff. Like I I can ride fine and have fun, but it's just doing it for 20 minutes plus a lap really fast. It's the difficult part. With what do, it, what but, do you think about like a six or seven amateur lap uh, amateur race where you? You know, take a sight nah. lap once or, once no or twice. No practice. No <laughs> practice. I mean, think that's nah. very little well, laps. You could, have laps so much, you could have so much fun, Adam. No, I don't think I. I don't want to rule any. I don't want to talk in absolutes. It's like I just try to stay away from that at, at all times. But I don't see myself, at least right now, like racing, doing the Loretta thing, or anything, anything like that. Um, like I, I feel like I'll just be kind of a sole rider now. But we'll see. We'll I, I'd see. like to see Adam. Like test the bike for a magazine that's not a Kawasaki. I would just want to see Adam wow. Cincirillo on another Anything. color. Wow, that would blow my mind. Wow. I, even if he just sat on a Yamaha. Wow, can we just can we just like Mike? Can we Listen, organize I'll, that? I'll start by sending him a you shirt. Know, yeah, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy is I during my entire pro career and and I can I can say this now, I'd never even hopped on a different motorcycle like. You know how guys ride, like typically you go to a training, mm -hmm. like a training compound with seven different factory yeah. dudes there, and of course they'll all deny it, but everybody gets on their bikes at a certain point in time. Mm -hmm. I never one time got on a different bike. Wow. Like I straight up haven't ridden anything but a Kawasaki since 2004. Um, like straight up. Yeah, that is so well, nuts. I can actually vouch for that because so one of our, our biggest viewed video on YouTube, Pulp MX, biggest viewed video, is Ryan Villopoto Outdoor Prep. And this is Adam on a super mini. We put a GoPro on him, and you did laps at Baker's outdoor track, Adam, at the end. And we didn't put any music to it. It's Adam pinned on a super mini, GoPro, through the sand whoops. And, and that's the part of the video that everybody loves. And uh, so that day, Roxon was there. I don't know if Roxon was there or not there, like physically there, but he was riding there. And um, that day, Adam got on a Roxon's uh, Suzuki. 110 or something like i don't it was a mini bike adam you don't remember this do you oh okay no i don't yeah it was like a like you just 
sat on it. You didn't ride it. I took a picture of you. You freaked out. <laughs> and, and no I de- way. And I deleted it. But I was like, Adam rides the Suzuki. And it wasn't even – it was a pit bike. It wasn't even like a real bike. And, uh, yeah. And, and you it's were, the same frame anyway. Suzuki pit bike was the they same. They were. They were. Like Good point. Good, Good point. Thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. you were like, delete that, delete that. I did. I'm colorblind. Yeah, yeah. I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that, that was funny. That comes to mind. And then that video, like I said, right, Marks? It's our biggest viewed – Video by far. Yes, not yeah. even close. Yes, and I and I most of it is due to Adam and the super mini. The comments yeah. are all. Is that how you're going to afford his salary for the Pulse yeah. Mech Show? Like, yeah, you still, the, all the royalties you still get yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to do that for sure. Adam, do you do you for your? I mean, look, you saw the comments. We all saw the comments. Get in the booth. Get in the booth. And, and you do, you know you're doing your podcast now. I, a are you going to keep your podcast going? And B are you going to try to do some TV work with Feld or, or somebody and Obviously, you're a natural. You're great at it. Is that the plan? So the plan, the plan right now for sure. My my podcast. I want to do. You know, I, I'm going to look at this next kind of this next phase of my life. I, I'm not looking to kind of coast it, coast it in. Like mm-hmm. I, I really want to be involved and kind of. I'm not sure if I'm going to want a little break when I'm done or 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 what. But I know I want to work hard at at this. Like, like whatever I do next. Um, I want to do the best that I can with it. So for sure the podcast and um, there's a couple little opportunities that are popping up in terms of, you know, kind of the broadcasting role. And of mm-hmm. course, you know, that is, you know, that's a big dream of mine to do that. I mean, I remember, shoot, it was 2014 um, after I hurt my shoulder. I remember I got a um, kind of an invite to do some of the 250 races with, I remember it was MetLife Stadium. Yep. Um, it was the first one I did with uh, Ralph and Jeff, and I, I've loved it ever since then. Like, And even I did it 2022 Minneapolis. I was down on the floor doing it. I did 2018 Red Bud. And, and every time, every time I get there, man, and, and I'm in that role, it's like, it's crazy. I have so much fun. Like, oh, that, that, the kind of racer persona drops away from me so naturally and so fast. And I feel like, um, I don't know. I, I, mm-hmm. I feel more, I, I don't know if this is like cocky or I, I don't know, but I feel more naturally gifted at that than I do riding a dirt bike now, well, you know, for whatever that's worth. Like it, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just, it seems it, it's very difficult, but at the same time, I, I love dirt bikes so much. And, um, most of the time my excitement isn't, isn't scrambling my words up too much. So, I mean, that's definitely a goal, but with that said, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like I just uh, feel like I'm entitled to just go up there and, and start whenever I want. You know, there's a lot of guys in those, you know, RC, um, we, all the, all those guys, Lee Diffie, those guys are great. And I'm definitely even, um, Justin Brayton's doing a fantastic job now. Jason Thomas, all those guys, they do great. And, you know, it's definitely a goal of mine, but I, I'm down to work for it. You know, I'm down to, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm patient. Like it's, it's a goal of mine and I'm going to do everything I can to, to be there, you know, one day, but I'm not, uh, I certainly don't feel entitled to anything. Well, Adam, I'll tell you, one of the first times I, you know, I think maybe we had passed it, Loretta's or somewhere, but you were, you might remember this. I think the KX had just gone from an 80 to an 85 and Anaheim Supercross, and you were standing in front of a very large group of people at the Cowie truck explaining the changes and how excited you were about the new 85 and whatnot. Not sure if you remember that night, but I stood there as a fan, I'm much like you. I'm just a big fan of the sport. And I thought, man, that is a well-put-together kid. He's got clear thoughts, and that's not easy to, to roll through. You know, I've had to do it many times on video and in other places. And, uh, yeah, I thought, no, I, I really like this kid. This kid's got a, a good head on his shoulders. So I think whatever you do going down that road, you'll be very successful. Well, thank you, sir. It means a lot coming from you. I appreciate it. Oh, I uh, Yeah, it's definitely – Definitely the goal. And, you know, the biggest thing, biggest thing for me just in life in general, man, I just want to contribute. Like, I just want to, um, you know, where I'm, where I can be of value to people and, and to the sport. Like I, I'm okay. If it's, you know, the, the focus isn't on me, it doesn't have to be about what I'm doing. I just want to try to, uh, genuinely just want to try to contribute and do my best. Hey Adam, uh, this is Mike Ulrich from Yamaha. 
Um, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate you as well. I've been a fan of yours for a long time. We don't really know each other personally, but obviously see each other here and there at the races. But I've always really admired the way you carry yourself, your insight, all that stuff. So, um, Thank you, man. Thank yeah, you. Congrats. Uh, hopefully I'll see you at one of these upcoming races. I can shake your hand in person. And um, yeah, like Doug said, I, I'm sure whatever you do in the future, you'll be successful at it. And then um, are you planning to come out for the rest of the rounds to uh, to there goes my hero in opening ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think I deserve an opening ceremony spot to be honest with you. Um, but maybe you know maybe it would be cool if they had some time uh, at Salt Lake if I was able to to ride out that would be cool. But again, I don't feel entitled to that. I know I'm not a you know these guys that are that are the stars of the show right now. The guys that are putting on a show up front. I think the attention should be on them. But uh, I'm definitely going to enjoy it, man. Like, I, I have been for, you know, since I kind of decided this is for sure what I'm going to do, which seems like forever ago now, but it's really only like six weeks ago. Um, it's definitely given me a whole new look on things. And as much as you can enjoy a race in, in 12th or 13th place with, with one arm, I, I've been enjoying it. Yeah, really, with one arm. <laughs> well, you keep pissing me off because you're stopping while you're getting lapped. Because you're like, I don't know what to do. You're like Ricky oh, Bobby. Dude. I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh man, <laughs> I know. I'm blowing it. Like I can. I, there's some. There's been some opportunities for some backdoor top tens, man. Like, you know what's crazy is obviously we all wear a heart rate monitor, right? And like this year, I think my max heart rate, which is typically around 196, mm -hmm. like that's where I can hold at an outdoor national for you know 40 minutes or whatever. Yeah. And my max heart rate this year, like at Anaheim, it was like 171. Like I yeah. can't even, like I can't push that hard, yeah. you know. So I, I have some in the tank, definitely, at the end of these races. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I, I watch myself back on camera, and, man, they throw these blue flags so early, so early. Yeah. And, yeah, I pull over to the side, and then I got three, dude. I go from 10th to 13th just like that. Benny Bloss is like, sweet. Thanks, bro. Oh, dude. He's paying yeah, that he's guy gone. 20 bucks. Pull that blue flag out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I got to be better about that. I, I really – I was laughing the other week because Nick and, <laughs> Nick and I – oh, God. Nick and I were walking the track, and <laughs> he was trying to give me, like – advice on like how to deal with the blue flags and i'm like dude life comes at you fast <laughs> <laughs> we were on this track like, are we a year and a half real? ago we were on this track being like man here's how you win here's how yeah, you win exactly yeah. and it's like okay here's how you stay out of the way but also still yeah, you yeah know, don't lose three nine. spots <laughs> I, I uh listen you had a great career a national championship you won indoors and out but it is amazing. Yeah, you never got a 450 Supercross win, although there's five left. There's five left. Man, you never know. Yeah. yeah, we still got time. We got time. But, yeah, it's... I need a mutter. I need a mutter, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, you'll get one, hopefully. Uh, it's just, uh, fuck, so close. Anaheim won with Bam. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can think yep. of a few of them. San Diego yeah. with Cooper. Cooper, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, damn. Yeah, it's crazy that you never got one. Or, or you know, again, five to go. You never know. But, uh, but you won everything else. You want indoors yeah. and out and everything else, so, you know. No, for sure. I mean, yeah, that, that'll that definitely, you know, that one stings like 100%. I'm not going to say that it, that it doesn't, you know, because I, I believe that, um, you know, of course, I, I had had the ability to do it, and I, I think the ability is still in there, uh, still in there somewhere. But, um, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. man, it's, you know, nothing, I'm not going to say that I would have done anything incredible if I was completely healthy, you know, but I just really didn't give myself enough chances like healthy. You know, I, mm -hmm. um, you know, I didn't race a lot of races really. I mean, that's what it comes down to. And the, you know, the ones that I did, I wasn't, it was early in my, you know, my rookie season, just some, some rookie errors and, you know, it sucks. It sucks to say, and I, you know, you know what? I'm not going to even say it. It just sounds like an excuse, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I just, yeah, I wasn't good enough to get it done and, uh, I got, I got to live with it, but it's okay. I, I enjoy yep. watching other people do well and I can, I can get enjoyment from that. So it's fine, man. It's, it's fine. okay. Well, listen, Dubox got San Jose 91 <laughs> always, you know, Doug? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that was an exciting race. Yeah. Yeah, it was good for me, I'll yeah. just say that. <laughs> but you got that one, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I like to say between Jeremy and I, we got 73 wins. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Renthal.com bringing you Adam Cincerillo. Yeah, man, it's going to 
So, like, I don't know. Like, uh, this is a weird question. Maybe uh, my last one of the night for you. But Love like, those. do you <laughs> do you kind of mail it in during the week now? Like, what do you do during the week? Are you like, ah, I'm go, I'll ride Wednesday and then I'll do a half-ass moto and go to the like. What do we do? How do we know what to like? Are you gonna go on the bicycle rides? I don't know. What do you do now, dude? If if I was like that, I feel like everything I've ever said is a lie. You know, if I'm half ass and stuff, like, wow. what do I stand for? You know, I'm not saying what you, but you can for? half ass it now. Starting now, you can. <laughs> you know what? No, so no, this is, no. This is what I. This is what I went back to. So during this whole process with the arm and all this, man, there is so many days my my training is affected by it. Mm-hmm. Like, there's some days I can't hit the whoops. Like, there's some days I can only do so many laps or or do this or do that. And I went for like a, a year and a half straight of just losing my shit every time something like that happened. Mm-hmm. Like so bummed out that I, that I couldn't get to 20 in or I couldn't do this or that. And, and so I kind of just started slowly shifting my mindset to, to what the, our, I think it was Tyler was his name is the, the caller mm-hmm. earlier. Um, you know, and talking about just like doing your best and doing everything you can. I told myself, I'm not going to look back I'm not going to look back at this and say that I didn't give it everything I can. I wasn't going to let the frustration overcome me to the point that I started being an idiot and I started, you know, um, half-assing my stuff Mm -hmm. and and not working out, not being in shape, not doing this. I told myself, like, I can live with myself. I can live with these results if I do every single thing that I can do. Um, and I've done that. I'll continue to do that until until I race, you know, right. until I'm to the last race. But um, I kind of feel the same way about that in terms of like the actual retirement too. You know, like um, last year, I still had hope that that it was going to that it could get better. You know, I had some uh, decent races here and there, and, and had some flashes of speed, but. Um, this kind of this off season, and then I kind of knew at Anaheim really uh, that I was kind of plateaued, like it's not going to get any better. And kind of right then and there, I knew like, okay, I'm done. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not getting any better than this, and I've done everything I can do. I, I told myself I was going to ride this thing to the ground, and I found it, and and now I'm out. You know, I'm not going to hold on too long. I'm, I'm just going to move on and do my best at something else. Well said, man. Well. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for the time. I'm sure we'll have you back in, maybe co-host sometime this summer. That'd be cool. Um, Big enough check. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you already offered. Yeah, you can't yeah, take it no, back I now. <laughs> um, you'll be great, man, whatever is next. And uh, we appreciate the time. And, and, I mean, I feel like we'll we'll talk to you. Hey, while, while Adam's yep. still on, okay. I think it, it's time to pass the baton. Then uh, Adam was your, your amateur guy forever. Yeah. Steve, and now that you're an amateur racer, yeah. you've come to an amateur race. You're going to be fully thriving in the amateur world. Uh, okay. It's time for you to it. pick up a new amateur. I- and I think AC will be in support of this. A nice young 65 guy. You picked up Adam when he's on 85. Uh-huh. So you guys have had a what a 14 year career together. We rode this thing, yeah. You rode this yeah. thing, yeah. And, yeah. No, it's yeah. been great. We found Stu. Yeah. Well, we didn't find Stu, but we tried. Wow. Well, yeah, now that, it's time. Ta- it's now <laughs> since dude, I picked Adam cool. for you. Yeah. It's now time for me to pick you another amateur, and uh, I think I think you know who it is. It's uh, oh. Mr. Jaden Smart. Oh, you brought his jersey in. His jersey's oh, okay. in, man. All right. Wow. Yeah. Um, AC, I'm, I'm giving him a Jaden Smart jersey who's uh, – And he signed he, it. He's a ripper in the uh, 65 class. So I, I, okay, well, you can't, you can't get it framed until after Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that. I'll, we'll leave it right here. <laughs> Fair I, have a, I have a 292 jersey in here he somewhere. He does. There right it is. There. Right there. Yeah, the 292 jersey. But, I, I, XS. Um, but ever since I heard the news, I knew this, yeah, this was going to be on my shoulders. Right. And since well, he was going to be on tonight, I knew, I knew it was up to me to make all this come together. You, you needed a new well, amateur. To be Beautiful tru- segue. To be truthful, I have Vince Way, but his dad is a pain in the ass. And so, I didn't give him to you. The, the, I gave yeah. you AC. Right, I'm right. giving you. I got my, it. I'm yeah. giving you my guy. The dad is. And this a, is hard. Jaden should be my guy. Okay. Just like AC should have been my guy. Well, Maybe a AC. Smart choice. Yeah. Um, oh. uh, okay. We can we can follow this kid. We can work with speed. He yep. jumps the triples on a 65. That's, he does. That's, that's pretty. Uh, AC actually probably knows who he is. He jumped the triple at uh, Charlotte last year on the 65. And it's, make sure it, make sure he's doing his shoulder exercises. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Adam, the uh, the finding Stu video. We can make a sequel to that. <laughs> yeah, maybe 
dude, that was, I remember how nervous we were going yes, up to the gate. Yes. Like, dude, I you was were freaking out. Hey. You were freaking yeah. out. Was he? Yeah, we were oh, driving yeah. up the Stu gate. He's like, I don't know, man. I don't know if we should do this. I'm not sure we should do <laughs> this. Sacred ground. Sacred I'm like, we're ground, already here, dude. man. It's too late. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, uh, good times. Uh, thank you, Adam. Thanks for calling in. And, uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll talk soon, uh, and you'll crush it in whatever you do next. We all know that. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the kind words. Have a great show. All yeah, right. Thank you, man. Thank What's you, up, buddy? Good to hear you. Thank you. Bye. So you guys, you're telling me you guys didn't, Easter, everybody. You didn't call uh, the Stewarts and tell them that this was happening. It was all full-on impromptu. Yeah, I know. We didn't tell them anything. Wow, yeah. that's great. Yeah, it was, it was something else. Uh, also, thanks to the folks at Renthal for bringing you Adam Cincerillo and Ethica as well. Thank you to Ethica. Pulpamex20 is the code to save. Ethica, great stuff. And uh, use the code Pulpamex20 to save. Women's, uh, men's, uh, kids, all of it. Quality products, premium brand experience at Ethica. Pulpamex20 and Renthal bringing you Adam Cincerillo on the show. Uh, all right, we do have the x brand goggle tear-off segment. Let's do that right away with Wait, the Wait, you don't want to say thanks to Vermoto for presenting you a new amateur? Thanks, Verb. <laughs> 